McFarlane obtaining full access to the DC license, he can now go deeper into a lot of other stories and characters. And this is one Superman that I did not know existed in any storyline. I really do like the artwork and concept, and I'm very anxious to work on this. Especially since people or other viewers have watched the channel and have asked and requested to be going pinless in some of these figures or to hide those pins. I know that's why you're here. Let's get started. So let's have a quick overview of what we're going to be working on in this episode on this particular figure. And as you can tell, I've already worked on the shield. I was anxious to do so and that's what I used for the intro. But you're going to have a blast working on this because there's a lot of detail that's put into this shield alone. Now I did give it the paint job or treatment with the rub and buff and I used the gold and the silver to mix that kind of a rose gold that you see there and of course the silver on its own. But if you turn it over, there's an extensive amount of detail here too and some dry brushing is going to go a long way here. Now if you want to see how I use the rub and buff, I'll have a clip later on that in this episode but I do have a link for an episode I just dedicated for that. The emblem on the chest has to come out. It's embedded just like in all of the other figures. That's going to be good because we're going to be using that as a mold to create a casting. And these rubber belts or chains, they're not actually glued in very well. They, uh, they come off very simple as you just saw that. And the one underneath the chest emblem, you do have to heat that up. Now the axe has to have that rub and buff treatment as well. That metallic finish on the blade is going to really pop and I'll show you that later in the video. Headed back to the figure, let's pop the head off. It's a rubber head. It's going to come off really, really easy. No need to even heat this thing up. And a lot of people do ask me, well, how do you take your figures apart? What are you doing to pull away all of those uh, pieces? Well, in this particular case, we'll have to heat up this neck collar with a hair dryer and then maybe even cut it because it's embedded into the actual collar line. The cape itself, it's going to need some more heat, again with a hair dryer. And look at this. The elbows don't match in color to the arm. Different colors of plastic. And same thing on the knees. Different plastic, different color. So that's going to be something that needs to be worked on and of course you've got these bracers or these cuffs that are molded onto the boot they are not separate pieces we're gonna have to remove those and we'll scavenge a few of those pieces to reuse so we've got to heat up those uh, ankle joints and remove and pop the feet off to cut those away actually dremel those away let's get started So a hair dryer is going to be your best friend for something like this. It's better than boil and pop because you can concentrate the heat only where you need it and it doesn't get slippery. Once you've got it all taken apart, here we go. We've got all of the pieces we're going to work on. Now there's something I want you to take notice of is that now it looks like my Farland production is uh, gluing the trunks onto the bottom of the ab joint. So you're going to have a surprise if you didn't know that's why I'm telling you ahead of time you'll have to heat up that plastic to soften it up enough and with a flat head screwdriver pry the plastic away from the other surface to pull it apart you'll be uh, it'll take you a few minutes same thing on the chest emblem you'll have to heat that up and have it consistently hot so that you can actually pry away plastic from the plastic it is, this one is was well glued in there, so it took a while. Now the cape itself is actually embedded into the chest. There's holes that they've drilled into and they've glued the cape in. So you'll have to be very careful to pry those out because those holes are not very deep. If you drill any further, you're drilling into the arm cavity or the shoulder cavity. And if you do, don't worry, um, it's not gonna be seen, but you'll have to 
plug those holes. Same thing on the back where the cape was. It's got that square peg hole. And remove that center peg and then fill it in with epoxy. And of course you've got the peg holes in the neck collar that you've got to fill in. Now this clip or this uh, chain is glued underneath the actual emblem and then it's glued on the packs on both left and right with those other pegs and it's supposedly pegged in the center of the back but as you saw it came off really really simple this is the neck collar you'll have to cut it to remove it it is drilled into and you'll have remnants of it there you can drill those out if you like just enough to be able to fill them with putty that piece you can reuse unfortunately the cuffs we can't reuse we'll have to remove those entirely so remember to heat it up with a hair dryer remove the hand along with that ball peg and then dremel away what you don't want from that uh, from those cuffs I ended up salvaging the hinge etc because I wanted to reuse those now look how soft this plastic is I haven't used any heat on this to be able to remove it I just twisted it and it came right out but I'll show you how to get rid of those unsightly pegs in just a moment now take a look over here this one is a little bit better because the mushroom on the peg is a lot a lot bigger and it extends that much further and of course once you soften it up you can take your flat hitch screwdriver and just pry it and then take it away from the other side and there you go that's how easy it is to remove the legs away from the pins but let's get started with the project so to start out you'll have to clean up the pieces that you pulled away from and fill it in with that epoxy sculpt wait for it to dry sand it down to a nice smooth finish and then get ready for paint Now since we filled in the cavity where this emblem was, we can't reuse it. We'll have to make a casting, make a mold and a silicone mold just like this. Put in our piece, wait for it to cool, pull it away. And now we have that cavity we can fill in with our epoxy sculpt or your choice of putty that you may have. You'll have to wait for that to dry, but you need to cover each and every tiny little millimeter in there so that you don't miss any details. Now, unfortunately, this casting business with this particular technique isn't perfect. You'll have some imperfections. If you ended up pushing too hard or you didn't cover it well, there's other ways of casting or making molds and in this case, this is just the very economical one. This silicone mold you can pick up from Amazon and it is malleable once you heat it up in some water or some hot air and then you can configure it to what you need. There are other methods of making molds. They're a little more expensive, even more time consuming and a lot messier. Are they accurate? They certainly are, but it just involves how much time you're willing to spend making a mold. It took me four attempts to get a good casting that was going to work properly. And that was just due to many factors. If you think you're going to put this out on the sun, which I did, and you think it's going to dry quicker, which it does, it also distorts it. Now this is my fourth piece and it turned out really, really nice because I let it air dry inside at room temperature. Now look what happens when you let it dry outside and it's hot. The whole thing starts to distort because not only does the silicone get hot, but it begins to distort and it distorts the putty that's inside. So then you've got all of these funky shaped shields and none of these work. So now I have to reattach all of those chains that I removed. Well, I'm actually adding new chains, but I need some rings to attach it to. So I headed over to the craft store, Michael's, and I picked up these pieces. Yeah, I used that cylinder for some die cutting later, so you saw that great cutouts or circles. Now these rings 
also came with this kit. It also came with these other decorative pieces that I may use on other pieces to decor some, some capes, etc. But in any case, these are the rings I want to use with this chain to attach those to the emblem. And this chain is a copper tint. And here's the uh, one of the chain links. And as you can see, it's got an opening so I can pry it open with a screwdriver or I can just cut it, either way. It all depends on what you want to do. But these rings are the perfect size and fit to reattach the chains and the cape to the actual emblem on the chest. Let's take a look. Now these cuffs I had to craft from scratch out of styrene and the pieces that I scavenged off of the others before I dremeled them off, I just glued them on. Now this is our emblem fully painted and I've got the chains attached with a few loops of uh, pleather which I glued onto the back and there's our finished look, it's going to work. So this is the main reason why you're here to watch this part of the video. How do you go pinless? Well, that's a misleading statement. You can't go pinless. You need the pins for the action figure to work or be articulated. It's hiding those pins, which actually is what the term is deriving to. Because any figure you have has pins in it. Otherwise, it wouldn't articulate. Now. The whole point is that they have a whole different technology to hide those pins. So let me show you how the pins actually work. If it wasn't for those pins, you wouldn't be able to articulate your figure in these poses. But take a look at the actual pin. It's an outward mushroom that is holding on to the edge pieces to keep them tight and hold them in together. And that is the same for the elbows as it is for the knees. The whole point is to hide those. Well, how do you do that keeping the mushroom that's holding against those edge pieces? However it is that they figure it out, I don't know. I can only show you what I came across in actually producing this figure. Keep in mind that you do not want to cut the mushroom off the pin. You'd want to melt that pin and cause a mushroom in the opposite direction, an outward mushroom. Then you can send it and paint it. Now in this particular piece that you're looking at, I did cut it. And look what happens. You can't keep it closed. And as much as you try to mushroom it out, and that's by using your Dremel to, on a high speed to melt the plastic and have it mushroom outward, then yeah, it's going to be difficult. Now you can try prying it back together and it'll hold a temporary like this, but it's still not going to work. The best thing to do is have a fresh pin like you see at top. Do not remove it. Mushroom it out. Make a small pilot hole at the end, a very center of it. Then take your Dremel at a high speed like you see here and watch the plastic melt outward. Once it's melted at least a 16th of an inch out and you've got a nice divot, you can polish it out with that same Dremel piece and then fill it in with some epoxy sculpt or your choice of epoxy. Now the epoxy isn't going to hold on as a permanent solution. It's only a cap for that divot that you made. It's only gonna be a surface what do you call it? Um, it's only for looks, it's aesthetics really. It's not gonna do anything. The pin is doing all the work. Now here, if you're using the epoxy sculpt or your choice of putty, you need to extend it as far into the other surface as possible so that when you sand it, you have a smooth surface. 
Keep in mind that these are two different materials and one will sand easier than the other. And if there's two different materials and you've got a hard edge, it's gonna be very noticeable where one of them did not sand as well. And you'll have that hard edge that's gonna be irritatingly noticeable. Now I went ahead and repaired this same leg you're looking at. I replaced it with a full new pin from another body. I followed my own instruction and I used this time resin. I mushroomed it out like I mentioned before, but instead of using putty, I filled it in with resin. Why resin? Resin's a plastic. It's liquid form, so it goes into crevices and cavities that the putty can't. It dries quicker with the UV light and it sands just as easy as the plastic it's on. So it's really, really easy to work faster and more efficiently in hiding those pins. And as you see at the top, those pins are hidden. It's now part of the muscle structure. Once you paint it, you're set. Now let's talk about paint one more time because it comes up every single time regardless of the figure that I paint. Sometimes it's the same people, sometimes it's different people. So I want you to take a close look at the paint that I'm using. This is all the colors that I have. This is the same paint that we're going to use to create the skin tone that I want to use. In this case we're going to match the skin tone that's there and then enhance it from there. Now I can't give you a recipe because every skin tone is different. And from what you'll see here, I've cleaned off my palette. I'm putting in only the four colors that I'm going to be using. You can see that the majority of the paint that I'm using is the white and the yellow. And I did not add the red and the blue directly into the other uh, source, which is on the far right. The yellow and the white together gave you that light pale yellow. Just by touching the red, look how strong it is. That's why you don't add a full drop. Every color of skin tone is just a process of different quantities of paint mixed in together. Now, the red and the blue together give you that slightly purple. Adding more of one to the other gives you a different shade of purple or in the very end adding yellow you get a slightly uh, suntan look of brown so I'm gonna let you watch the rest of the video without me talking over it and you'll see that color change in the mix you'll have to create your own recipe write it down and reuse it if you like especially if you are repainting multiple figures in the same skin tone keep in mind that each paint or brand has a different characteristic. So the amounts in one paint may not be the correct amounts in a different one because of the chemical compounds. Now I've sped up the camera in editing simply because I want you to see how I derived two more skin tones from this same tone on the right hand side. And I'm gonna be using all three to enhance what's already on the figure. Remember, this is the tone that's to match it and the other two are to enhance it. Let's take a look.
Well, you made it through the mixing process, now you're ready for paint. So if you got your airbrush ready, let's get it loaded up. It doesn't take a whole lot, just a little bit of what you can load up from the actual brush, put it right into the inkwell and start painting. So as you can see, a little bit of paint can go a long way. And let's take a look at a few of the details that pop up while painting the figure. It's gonna be very important to notice imperfections before finishing the painting. Now, even though you do a lot of prep work, a lot of times you don't see what you may have missed. And it's when you start brushing in with your primer or your actual paint in this case, that you notice that you missed the spot. And in this case, there's a lot of little spots that the putty didn't cover well, or I didn't have enough in there, and they're gonna be noticeable. Now the spots where they're gonna be covered either by the shield or the cape, that's not my concern. It's the portions that are gonna be visible, and that can either be on the chest or the legs. And if you didn't sand those plugs on the legs properly, you're gonna see some hard lines and you're gonna have to stop, wait for the paint to dry or use a hair dryer and sand again and then come back. So you make sure that you've mixed in plenty of that color to be able to paint the areas that you're going to be retouching. And if you can tell the areas that are black, it's actually this is a black plastic just painted, they're gonna take a little bit more paint to be able to match it in. So just take your time. It's not a race. It's all about being as accurate as possible. So after applying the base paint and doing a lot of retouching as far as re-sanding, this is what it'll look like. And this is the part or the point where you want to use your other skin tones that you mixed in and enhance what's already there. Let me show you the difference between the enhanced one and the one that is not. The one on the right is the actual skin tone uh, match that we have. The one on the left is the one we're actually adding skin tones on top of what's already there. And as you can tell, I've added some flex of spots and that's by uh, using a brush and just flicking off the paint. I've added some blue and some red. It's really hard to tell here on the camera so close because of the lighting. But once you've got it set, it's ready. Now I've gone ahead and added some paint to the actual shield. I've added a few more details on the front. I'm sorry. And I added some uh, details onto the back. And it really enhances it that much more. It's up to you how much more detail you want to pull out. But this is what is an idea of what you can do with your particular figure. Now speaking of paint, I went ahead and I also made uh, what's going to be the cape. Now this is not a cape making video, but this is in essence what I ended up with. And somebody suggested, oh it's got to be a cape that's worn and dirty, etc. I agree. And, but it still needs the two wires. Now I've got those glued in with some of that iron-on tape. Now, there is no sewing on this. It's just a piece of rayon cloth that I folded in on the edges, added the wire to, and just curved the ends to uh, go over the shoulder. I've cut out the holes and I used an airbrush to then paint in the wear and tear on the bottom with your browns and blacks. Now in case you missed the video that was specifically done to show the use of rub and buff, I'll give you an idea of what that video actually dealt with. And it's using this rub and buff wax, which is actually a pigment, it is not a paint. But it goes so well with figures like this because you can actually rub on the area that you need with this wax. Once it dries within a few minutes, you can polish it out and seal it with whatever sealant you want. If it's a shiny surface, you can use a high gloss. If it's a matte, then use a matte sealant. But take a look at how a little bit goes a long, long way. 
Now you'll want to be careful when you are working with this because if your hands are dirty, you've got your hands in this mix, it's gonna transfer really easy. If this isn't fully dry, it transfers and it's really difficult to remove unless you're gonna paint over it. But look how, how nice this metallic look is on the blade. It's actually a lot nicer than the silver paint. This pigment works out really, really well. So consider using the rub and buff. Let's take a look and put everything back together to see how this looks like before we add the accessories. Here's our view and let's see if we can count the pins because that's why we're here in this video to see if the possibility is there of eliminating the pins. Well, as I said, the pins are still there. It's covering the surface where the pins are visible and it's definitely a lot less noticeable. If you've got this figure, you obviously can notice where there was work done, but if you didn't know there were pins, it'd be difficult to notice. So we've made it to Cape Installation. And the install on this is completely different. You need to make the straps into the rings out of pleather. The ring with the strap will then go around the end of the cape and you can bend it over to clasp it in there. And because it has a wire, it will stay. If you glue it together, the red to the red, then the cape will no longer be removable. By only bending the wire, you make the cape removable. However, the cape, once removed, which is actually holding up that S-Shield, uh, the S-Shield will then come off. Now, to install that cape, you need to install the S-Shield, or I should say the harness with the shield, and you'll have to take your figure upside down, prop his feet up, so that you can actually get it to slide toward the chest and I'm being careful here because I don't want to scratch the paint so what you need to do is find out which links you are going to hold down now you can hold it down with glue sure now I'm going to use some tape because I want to identify the exact position because I'm going to drill some holes I'm going to drill some holes because I'm going to attach it with very small wires. And I've already cut those wires ahead of time into a C a clasp. So it's gonna fit around each one of the links that I want. I want the furthest out and centered into the back. These are the little hooks that I'm going to use. It's a black wire. I've already pre-cut these and bent them into shape. This is the drill I'm gonna use. It's about a 1 32nd in size. This is what you want to end up with. And you want to pre-fit these before you use your super glue. Because once you've got that super glue in there, wherever it touches, it's gonna stay. And yeah, it's tricky to do so. But once you've got it done, it should look like this. And it should hold up the harness just like this. Now, the actual emblem, as mentioned before, is gonna be held up by the weight of the cape. I hope that it was worth your while to stop by once again. And again, if this is your first time, I hope that you learned something about hiding those pins. I'm sure some of you were wondering how to do so or if it was even possible to do so. I'm leaving you with a before and after look because a lot of you have requested those. And this will give you a full insight as to what the completed figure 
looks like. As you can see, we've got a full cloth cape on the right, plastic cape on the left, and we have no paint apps on the left side, and a full scheme of paint apps on the right. So much so that not only the S shield is enhanced, but of course the skin tone. And I went ahead and enhanced also the gray in the hair and the scars in the face as well. And of course, giving it some more tone. Now, as you can tell, we've got the shackles that are removable on the hands and on the feet. They're not glued down. And we have now pins that are hidden away. Of course, if you hone the figure, then you know where those pins are. But if you had no idea about this figure or this even line of toys, you would know where the pins are because they're well hidden. Now, the shackles that are on the hand, well, on the left hand that holds the shield, that is now an obstruction for the shield to uh, slide onto. So I had to modify the shield by increasing the size of the straps. And I did that just by adding some leather to the actual straps. But I'm gonna leave you with the rest of this video. I hope that you learned something today. I hope that you liked the video. In any case, we'll see you here next time.